Hello Amiga Nerds, it's Chris and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. What do we have on the show today? Another box shows up and what do we got inside? We got some loose packing. I just sliced her open. Uh, we, uh, we have a Rev 6. Praise Jesus! It's got some battery damage, go figure. Doesn't look too bad though. No note. I'll have to look in email and see what's up with this. 28th week of 1990. It's a little late in the game for the 2000s when the 3000s were coming out, but you know they're still making them to the end. This has had the battery snipped and 1.3 ROM, 68,000, 1 meg Agnes. I'm going to go ahead and advance and move uh, J300 to the right. That is external tick. I'm going to pre plumb the Amiga Kit 2000 to ATX. Gonna use the old Dell on uh, VGA with the adapter here, and we're just gonna see what doesn't happen. Maybe it works. I don't know. Probably not. I do have a old uh, Amiga 2000 power light thing. Okay, here we go. Power light it's stuck in high. Interesting. I'm gonna let it run for a minute. Doesn't work. Go figure. What's wrong with it? This socket is borked. At least it's a Rev 6. I'm gonna try the GBS because we have it. Dead, 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 dead. Uh, Agnes has crust and green all around her. That's wonderful. It's dirty. It's got like some mud splatter. Like some I chewed a bunch of mud and just went and spitter this way. Chips look splashed, dusty, and this is doing nothing. Why would there be a socket issue? Well, it's always a gift when you crack these open. Membership in the Jelly of the Month Club. Oh, this is a very special Christmas present. <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Oh my god. Oh my. It's always a it's always something when you crack into these words. Sometimes you just gotta laugh. See if you can tell me why this Amiga 2000 may not work. Um, half of the CPU pins are missing, and the other half are just a nice coating. What kind of chemical you got in there? Gone, gone, gone. Green, green, nothing. Green, green, nothing. Green, green, green. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Green. Nothing, 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 nothing. That, uh, that might be it. <laughs> That's right. When you do this hundreds of times, you kind of get used to the scenario of what's wrong with my Amiga. 90% of the time on a Amiga 2000, regardless of my favorite Revision 4 or the Rev 6 and some Rev 5s, uh, when the battery eats the CPU socket up, you're going to have just some issues with connectivity. Uh, people, you know, clean the CPU pins and shove them back in. And what happens is uh, it's not making contact. Either the dots next to the resistor pack, now on a, oh my god, just coming off on my finger. Uh, the dots next to the resistor pack where RP900 would, whoops, would normally be, on a 2000 Rev 5 is just the solder holes because the Rev 6 did some other science and they only needed uh, RP 101 for the resistor pack off of the CPU to the ROM lines. What the hell did you just say? They did add another resistor that used to be a tag in off of one of the CPU lines and that's that's fine just revision changes for simplicity and cost savings and better quality fixes. Regardless of how this looks in its present form, what I'm talking about mainly, here's your girl. There's two dots here, right? 68,000, there's one here. There's a line for a 64th pin here that runs around, goes down to this resistor pack, over to these dots. These dots here are ROM lines and Agnes lines. Very important. The resistor pack always goes to the ROM and, you know, that should be looked at too. A lot of times I'll, t I'll when I take the socket out, I'm going to do some continuity testing. Sometimes I will even uh, 
just remove the solder out of these holes and make sure the ring on the via is still intact. What do you mean the ring? Imagine a hole with a wire line of a circuit coming in. As corrosion happens, most of the time the line breaks right at the ring and it's not making continuity. Most of the time you can solder drag and restore that uh, trace, which is great. I don't know what it is about the Amiga. I'm going to have to do some deep dive into why I do this. That would be an interesting video. Now, let's crack this pizza open and check out underneath. I don't think it's going to be too bad. And lift up and pull forward. Not bad at all. Now, you do see some blackness, some blackness, and some blackness. That is just either old dust or fingerprints on the bottom. I think this is just dust. This looks extremely well. It's going to have fingerprints on the back because I touched it and the owner has touched it. But all in all, it looks great. As far as the battery itself, the posts are in. There is corrosion through some of these holes. Uh, that means it is leaked from the top and sucked through that via, what I was talking about earlier, and causing a little bit of a green spot. And I'll show you two dots here that these two guys here are green. Well, here's your 68,000, here's your battery, here's that right side where the pins are gone. Most of these CPU pins all the way up have been broken off. We're going to bust out the uh, solder station here and we're going to remove these three posts for the battery. Fiberglass pen from the bottom at least. And then a little tickle of Hooper's Hooch. It's battery removed. Look at that. You can see the silver. Somebody has enchanted me and did a red cap here. Uh, because I don't have the strength in a soldering iron, I'm going to use my micro drills. You can get these at, uh, you can get them on Amazon, but you can also get them off of Harbor Freight Tools in their aisle with the Dremels. Just using these micro drills here to get that hole clear on the ground because if you've ever experienced removing these things, Acid damaged or electrolytic damaged solder turns into this concrete uh, uh, dust hard uh, 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 steel crap that will not melt. That's why I add solder to it. However, it doesn't always work. Now I'm going to hit this with a fiberglass pen. Fiberglass pens are self destructive, so they will uh, make a white dust all over the place which you'll see your work better when you alcohol it. Still pulling it out. Look at that. Still pulling it out. It's in the hole. So the important thing is, is we have the area, at least that part, now not making such a big dookie mess. Now the fun part. What I do, you've seen many times, take Lorena Bobbitt here and I will snip the legs out. Now I'm not touching the board at all. These sockets are raised up. So you will see the socket flexing. Don't worry, I'm fixing it anyway. That just shot me right in the chest. All right, I do that so I can do two sides at once. This is literally falling apart. Again, I'm gonna add solder to the points like I always do. Here's your 68,000. And I might be in your way for a second as I add solder to these pins to chemically change this electrolytic stuff into something that the solder remover can bite on. Do not worry about being, uh, if you bridge anything or you make a mess because this is just to remove it anyway. With solder added to the pins, now I can remove them. Uh, I'm not going to worry about showing you the removal. You can watch one of my other 400 videos. Want to see how I remove them? This is a GI Jelly GUG that. China! GI S993 Alpha from GAO G. Uh, GAO JIE. Gaojai? 
and uh, that's not blood that's marker and it's a cartridge based solder sucker which means there's a vacuum pump here that sucks air from here ouch through here this cartridge takes your solder and it's vacuum sealed with rubber dudes and although it looks like it holds a lot it will hold about one row of pins um, you take this little tiny rod and you stick it in this hole ah. and that way you know you are not blocked it's only 100 watt which is like Japan style here in the United States of America where Jesus lives we are 120 volts if you're in the old euro zone your current is way higher than ours so your stuff can really throw some heat here i'm limited to 1500 watts per outlet this little guy is 75 never hits hot temperature and this is 100 watt so this has more current than that it's not it's it's not it's not that great that's why i'm looking for a better solution something with a transformer inside to up its power a little bit and give us more oomph. When you're done, that's the old crap and some of my new crap. Now I'm going to do the finger wiggle to break the solder free. Now you can only do the finger wiggle if you did a good job. If you didn't do a good job, well, you might have to touch it with your soldering iron, which based on the level of goop that I had to suck out of this girl, <coughs> you're going to really see I can now see a mark where there was some corrosion no, I got them all all right oh yeah look at this there's a better example of hey where's your CPU pins other side other side came out easy uh, not a lot of damage on there some green now for the moment of fun first look after a socket removal they're supposed to look like the guys on the left hand side of your screen here but there's a lot of darkness imprisoning me all that I see absolute horror as usual uh, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol I'm just gonna let it sit there for a second second up and uh, just give her a scrub. Now, I haven't ran over this with braid. Normally, I will do that, but I'm just going to get the chunks out because there's like solder chunks and just chunks. And then I'll fiberglass pen and I'll kind of go over the, the, the vias with some braid, smooth it out because it's kind of rough right now with the solder removal. Now you can actually see like the area of wetness that this thing did. Maybe it kind of goes bloop. I don't know. Just the darkness. I'm actually going to braid it and flux it because it's just too crunchy for me. Clearly, hopefully, see the difference between the top section and these. These are like just... I mean, the camera's showing a little bit, so I'm hoping that's helpful. It's just dark. These are, these are nice and bright. These are dark. Fiberglass pen should wake that up. Oh, yes. Look at that. Mm-hmm. That's what we want to see. But how many rings did we break? How many rings did we break? So as you can see, now it looks pretty jacked up. But, if I take a little ice of purple alcohol on a Q-tip now, and run her down. We can see metal again. Yay! However, it's not perfect. There are several of the rings that are not appearing to have a complete line out of the circuit here. You can see the green coming out onto the Q-tip and these two points here. While they cleaned up, I do have a busted ring here. Just the amount of goop coming out of there. Doesn't look too bad in the thousands of lumens of light above me. So I've removed the not a resistor pack, resistor pack. They're okay. On the bottom. Now over on the top, why I just today got more hand drills. So I bought two packs. They're not expensive. $7.99. It's called a micro carbide bit set. Her hand, you know, the what I'm rocking right now. 
So here are the holes that I'm evacuating. Um, <clears throat> this hole and this hole are the ones that are screwed up. So I have to drill through them. So I just take this thing and just start twisting. And that is not solder coming out of there. Look at this. Can you see that? This is as close as I can get on this turd camera. So I'm just going to back and forth myself. Just twisting my fingers over this thing and look at the goop coming out of that girl. Oh my gosh. That's why that's why that would never melt. Okay, it's never gonna melt. Just crack through. There we go. So that's one. Here's the other one that has a broken ring. Oh, it's chunky. Yeah. That's good. Fiberglass pen. And we're okay. Where is this black stuff just coming from? Just pulling out like she crapped herself. I think it's this uh, ground plane still got a little bit of dookie in it. Alright. Let's check the top. Several of the resistor pack holes are through, but three are not, and the one on the bottom. That concrete crap will not come out. I mean, it's like an uphill battle, and you gotta get it out of there, because it just means it's gonna break in the future. If you don't... Oh, that one just punched right through. This is all part of the electrolytic death. Now we're going to refill these on a Rev 4. This is a resistor pack, but I want to get the acids out from that crusty ass solder so I can replace it with new solder. Alright, I got to do these two. So now with the holes all finally de funky cold Medina, one more time. I can see metal again. We can see the coloring. You know, it's brass colored, but you know, I gotta check that one dot. I only have so many pins that I have to F with. The ROM is not messed up. Um, it's not uh, in any way that I can see. No acids, electrolytics, anything got over there. So what I'm going to do now is this is Sprint Layout Viewer for the 6.1, 6.2, 6 6.0 motherboard. I'm going to choose test over here and I'm going to touch pin 1. And you're going to see it blinks pink. Now the idea is I'm going to touch one probe here, one probe over there, and then I'll repeat the process over to the ROM line in a second. Uh-oh. Okay, sorry about that. Had a cloud suck all the life out of my solar. My battery must be taking a dump. We are good. Yay, and to the ROM point. Yay, that's this point. So I know this will be good. I will slide over to show you the whole path. That is the second pin from the bottom on the ROM. And we have continuity on that one. Now I will go to this pin, pin two. And that is the second pin on the right, or left. Intermittent. Oh, uh oh. I'm going to check RP3 line because this is jacked up. That is one of that dot. That's good. That's good too. Okay. So I'm going to start with the resistor pack lines just for my own sanity because, yep, your ring is toast. That's on the resistor pack side. Alright, so I got a dead one. 63 is dead. It's broken right here. And I had it from here to here. So that means either a wire from here to here. Or I'm going to try a drag solder repair. The problem with a drag solder repair is when I put the socket in, it may, it may melt that repair and 
not make it. So I must, let's check 64 because that girl gets me too. So 63, not bad at all. Okay, I think I have it cleaned enough where I can show you. And we're looking at uh, the third hole up here on this resistor pack. I'm going to do it as best I can. Now, you're going to see some, some goop, but there's some fiberglass look right here, and I scratched this. This is the line coming across. There's no ring on the bottom here. The copper goes on the top half, but it doesn't touch that. There's a break right on that line, right in that corner. I scratched it free to get a better view to see if I could drag solder it. And it looks like I'm going to do one wire. So, we're going to take a capacitor I don't care about, just for the metal. And I'm going to hold the cap while I shove it in this hole. Just so I have something to shove it in there with. Okay, and then I'm going to snip it. Snip it long, throw it out of the way. And I'm going to bend this line over and fill the living piss out of it with more solder. Alright, that's ugly. But, let's see if it worked. Alright, so I just took a... So I took a capacitor leg steel thing and I soldered it and it looks messy but see that wire there? It's close to the other line but it's not touching. And uh, Alright, so here we go. We're going to test continuity. Third pin up on a resistor to pin two and we got a nice strong solid line. No wire needed. Thank goodness. But I got to flip her over on her back because I got that leg bent over. And uh, I gotta clean it up a little bit. Okay, we are repaired. Clean it up real quick because I hate showing you dirty holes. So here you go, here's the bottom side. Here's where our wire is. You can't even see it. It's just the bottom of the solder leg, snipped off, filled all these holes back up with fresh solder. Front side, it's not touching. It's just, it, it's just the camera angle. The socket's going to cover most of that up. That big ball underneath of it, i got to kind of tone down a tickle. Now you can see the division. Those blobs are reflowed, refilled, drilled out. And now we're ready for the, the, the socket. Uh, these are Kaikon sockets. They are notched, so you can just... Socket's in. Socket's in. Can't even tell we were here, right? I left a rose bud in there for you. Just got tools and parts. Everywhere. Energizing. Low. High. Video signal comes on. The weight, she's 1-3. White screen. Do we get a disk drive? And bada bing, guys. That's the phase lock of the Dell. Just give her a second. Alright, let's go GBS. That's, that's the wrong color. But, damn GBS. Okay, so after I reset my GBS. Hi, welcome back. I had lunch at Chick-fil-A. Pretty good. As you can see, I got the 1084 out. I'm tired of messing with the GBS. For a Zorro card, I'm going to use my Cat Weasel. It's like this ultimate floppy controller thing. So I'm going to turn it on, double mouse button. Crystal, freaking clear. Expansion board diagnostic. Zorro 2, 64K. We are good. I'm going to boot ATK now that I have a uh, nice crystal display. I'm going to go to this controller ports thing. Of course, left and right mouse button, but my joystick, which I dropped on the floor, is an original Sega Master System pad. Uh, up, down, left, right, button one, button two. Do a reset double mouse button. And we're going to do display, pal, use, boot. This is really going to flicker now. 60 hertz monitor running a 50 hertz signal. Now it's not perfect in pal on a 1084. I'm getting a little bit better at this game. Like, I mean a little bit. Let's put the original kickstart ROM back in. Owner's original 1.3 ROM. The reason I did the modern kickstart was A, to test the Zorro, B, to have a DF1 bootability. Sorry for that line thing. That's the 60 hertz signal that I thought I had my camera phased to, but I don't. 
Another Amiga has been saved, everybody. Put her back together, and I'm going to wipe those fingerprints off the bottom. I found one battery, 2032. I've been using them up like man. $14 for this six-pack. I use these two-pole jobbers that I believe someone gave. I think Mr. Jack gave these to me a while back. But it has a positive and a negative. The positive is going to be that top terminal, and the negative is going to be this terminal. So you have to have a diode, like one of these. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a black ring on that thing. And the positives are the bottom. So you have to have it blocking the direction. So you don't want that to charge. And what I do is I usually solder this on first. Like, not like this. You can solder it right on this thing. One. And that goes in like that. And you just zap it on in there. Soldered in, one diode blocked hole. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna put a battery in it. There you go. Get my kickstart ROM again. Swap 1.3, which sucks. Just so I can boot Amiga Test Kit off an external. Monitor into the green screen GBS. Powering on. Here we go. Should boot Amiga Test Kit on its external little booty thing here in a second. There it is in blue. Just the the thingy. I broke my red on the GBS. No big deal. We're going to go to RTC clock. Detected. Uh, let's set a date and time. 2010. It'll be 6 o'clock. Save and exit. Back it out. Turn it off. Okay. Turn it back on. Again, GBS is blue, I broke my red. August 2010, 6 o'clock. Ta-da! Battery back, the clock's working. Mortimer, we're back. My job here is done. So I'm gonna put the owner's three, or one three ROM back in. Now that we know the clock is good. So that is it for this one. We had one borked line off of a missing resistor pack ring to a CPU. The CPU socket was just utterly trashed. So reflow on the resistor packs cleaned out with the micro drills, all those little old holes. Hope that little tidbit helps you out in the future. It will prevent any uh, re-electrolytic or acid creep in the future. We washed her with vinegar. So that's all I got for now. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey. Another Mega has been saved. Until next time, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.